Okay, now we are ready to run the analysis. Uh, from the Analyze menu, I'm going to go to GLM, or General Linear Model, and Multivariate Analysis. Click on this. And in this window, we need to populate the dependent variable box, as well as the fixed factors box. And if you're ambitious, uh, you can change your maneuver to a Mankova analysis by including a covariate. But that's a topic for another uh, video presentation. So let's move the uh, three dependent variables, grammar score, to the dependent variable box. And this way, just click and drop them. And then for the fixed factors, I only got one. Actually, you can have more. In this, in this case, I have a one-way maneuver because I only have one independent variable. What you could do is to add more uh, d uh, independent variables to the fixed factor if you have any. As you see, I don't have any, any anything left here. So then you will, you can create a two-way maneuver, three-way maneuver, etc. But the larger the sample, the, the larger the number of your variables, the larger the sample has to be. So I'm going to quickly walk you through these buttons and options here. Under model, as we have discussed in other videos, we need to keep it as full factorial and type 3 because there is, I assume there might be some uh, some missing data um, in, in this. There might not be, sorry, there might not be any missing data in this analysis. Even though it is, uh, SPSS actually gets rid of them list-wise, in a list-wise fashion. But if you're not sure if SPSS will, will do this, you can actually use type 4, which is more suitable for factorial designs where uh, you have some missing value. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just keep it as is and continue. Under contrast, you might want to do some contrast, which is pretty much like uh, post hoc analysis. Um, so you could use simple which is uh, suitable for factorial designs and just change this and leave these two uh, uh, these two as is. Our, I think our reference category here doesn't matter which one is a reference category for us because we have three levels of independent variables um, so I don't see a very big a big issue here in uh, leaving is as is. Continue and then you can go to plots and do the plots. So under under plots, I only have one variable, one independent variable, and that's stream, and I have to move it to horizontal axis rather than separate lines and add it. If I move it to separate lines, since we don't have anything on horizontal axis, we can't really uh, do anything about it, and it's not possible to add it. So I just click continue. Under post hocs, I would like to do some post hoc analysis across the three streams. So I can, uh, since I don't have a balanced sample size, I can choose Bonferroni correction, which is quite robust, and and also Games Howell, which is also a kind of robust post hoc analysis. If this lack of balance didn't exist, I could either choose uh, Tuki or Chef, and just click OK. In this case, I think I'm just pretty good. And EM means uh, gives you a similar output as post hoc analysis and even contrast will give you. So for this analysis you can either move factors uh, I mean overall to the display means for and stream or just one of them. Um, I'm gonna do this because this is really a, a presentation so you might be curious what kind of data we will get. Compare means compare main effects and bomb for any correction. So this bomb for any correction is gonna be the same as the bump for correction we chose under post hoc analysis. Click continue. For save, <clears throat> I have discussed this in another video that we can use, uh, we can save standardized residuals and look into the normality of the residuals, but that's not an assumption here under maneuver. So I will cancel this. Under options, I would like to get descriptive statistics, estimates of uh, effect size, and certainly homogeneity tests. And that should be good enough. You could do bootstrapping, but it's it's not going to be a real bootstrapping of the multivariate analysis. It will be just a bootstrapping of the mean and standard deviations under this one. I've, I've presented this in another video, if you are interested to watch. So it wouldn't do a really... Uh, a rigorous bootstrapping analysis for MANOVA itself. You can just leave it and OK. Now the results 
are outputted, the results for GLM, the between subjects uh, factors have been presented here. We have uh, the sample size for technical, uh, normal technical, normal academic and express groups. We also have the mean statistics and standard deviations for uh, the dependent variables across the levels of independent variable. For example, the mean score for grammar is 5.78 for uh, normal technical, uh, whereas uh, for normal technical, the mean score of vocabulary is 3.05. So far, uh, we have been looking into descriptive statistics. Now let's move on to uh, the other assumptions of MANUVA, one of, one of which is box test of equality of, vari of covariances covariance matrices and that's what I'm referring to that's number five now since we have a very large sample box test of uh, equality of covariances uh, is, is uh, gets quite sensitive so in large samples it can give us some uh, you know false positive uh, results and as a result to prevent that I, I suggest that we use a smaller p-value, for example, 0 0.01. And in this case, what I, uh, I have observed is, uh, well, if we go by the usually used criteria for p-values, which is 0 0.05 in uh, social sciences and applied linguistics, the box test of equality of covariances is, is violated. But since our sample size is pretty large, I would recommend that we use the criteria I, I suggested, 0 0.01. And even some people would suggest 0 0.001. In this case, I would say there is evidence that this is probably not violated severely. So now we can move on. Uh, let me go back to this and perhaps highlight it just to make sure we don't forget. Next is the multivariate tests. And basically, this multivariate test uh, is pretty much like the ANOVA multivariate test box, but the way that we interpret it is only slightly different. Uh, in this in this section of this box, uh, this uh, table, you will have uh, quite a few multivariate tests, the usual four ones. Okay, so we're we're looking at stream as our independent variable, and as the p-values indicate here in all of these tests there is a statistically significant difference across the levels of stream which is the independent variable on the linear combination of the three dependent variables uh, grammar, vocabulary and comprehension of course uh, the test doesn't show where that difference is let's remember that MANOVA condenses all the dependent variables into one linear component or one linear combination and compares the groups on that linear combination. So this is the, the, the comparison of the groups, the three groups of stream on that linear combination. So we need to figure out where that, uh, where that uh, uh, difference is exactly. The other thing we need to look at is the last assumption of MANOVA, which is Levine's test of equality of variances as presented in this table. So let's go back to the assumptions here. Levine's test of homogeneity of variances. Uh, since we have a larger sample size than usual, uh, the p-value should be set at a smaller level, at a smaller uh, value smaller than 0 0.01 or even 0 0.001. For this analysis, I'm going to stick with 0 0.01. Uh, so if you look at the output, the Levine's test of equality of variances is fine for grammar score. For vocabulary score, I'm, I'm just looking at the mean, based on the mean score. For the vocabulary score, uh, it's also fine by the criteria I mentioned because it's small, it's larger than 0 0.01, but of course it's below 0 0.05, but it doesn't matter in this case because our sample is pretty large with a degrees of freedom of 1835. And finally, for the comprehension score, I would say it's still fine. It, it meets the criteria. Uh, pretty close to violation, but it's fine. So we reject the hypothesis that 
Levine's test of equality of variance is uh, is rejected, you know, or is significant. Okay, so there is no, in other words, there is no difference um, in the variance of the groups. Uh, in these circumstances, let's say if the Levine's test of equality of variances is violated in MANUVA, and also the box test is violated in, Manu in MANUVA, uh, some scholars would suggest, for example, Andy Field in his book has suggested that we can consider a Pillay's trace test instead of uh, Wilkes Lambda. That will kind of correct for those um, the violations of those assumptions. In this case, either of these will be fine, even Hotling's trace and Roy's largest root will still be fine. Now I'm going to scroll down to the test of between subject effects and this is pretty much like separate ANOVAs. Uh, so first we have a MANOVA table, then we have an ANOVA table and following this we're going to see another table which is similar to t-tests. For ANOVA we will look into the relation, the uh, decomposed uh, effect of stream on the three independent, the three dependent variables: uh, grammar score, vocabulary score, and comprehension score. In this case, we see that stream uh, has a significant effect on grammar score because the p-value is much smaller than 0.000. .00 zero zero one and it's it's really close to zero itself with a partial eta square which is the effect size of zero point three three one which means that uh, the differences in stream explain thirty three point one percent of the of the variance in a grammar score which is pretty large actually uh, we have partial eta squares as well here uh, if you look at stream and partial eta squares uh, for the, the different tests, for Wilkes lambda, which we are using in this analysis, uh, the partial eta square is 0 0.234, which indicates that 23.4% of uh, the differences in the grammar, vocabulary, and comprehension composite score is explained by stream but we're looking at composite score or a combination score but we don't know which one uh, is affected to what extent and therefore we have to rely on this test of between subjects effects because it tells us which one of these variables is affected uh, and to what extent exactly